Davis steps under center. Gibson and McClendon behind it. Davis with motion by Richard. Will get the ball to McClendon. He leaps. Oh, he doesn't get in. He fumbled the football. Carolina holds. The game is over. And Carolina has won the game. Ben lead to throw. Over the middle. Intercepted. Wolfuck again. Wolfuck the other way. At the 30. The 40. Wolfuck to midfield. Miles Wolfuck with the pick. The heels on the doorstep of an enormous victory. Left side of the line. Hood standing to Williams' is right. Williams going to throw. One-on-one. Davis has it. Touchdown. Carolina wins. Carolina is the Coastal Division champion. Bernard fields it at the 26. Heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio is going to take it for a touchdown. for the possible win. Snap, spot, kick away, high enough, long enough. It's good! It's good! Carolina has won the game on a 42-yard field goal by freshman Hunter Burr. Good gosh, dirty. This is the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. Hey guys, and welcome in to this edition of the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. It's Anthony Pegnata with you guys as always, and tonight I'll be riding solo here on this edition of the podcast as we take a look back at the commitment of three-star defensive end slash linebacker Travion Stevenson. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the importance of landing him in this class and what it means for the Tar Heels going forward. We'll also look at a couple of other storylines going on around the team. Now, the reason that I'll be riding solo tonight is because Zach Hubbard is currently out of town and he'll be back on Saturday where we'll go back and circle back around, talk about uh, Travion Stevenson as well as a potential new commitment to the class that could be coming sometime this week as some of the other recruits have kind of tipped us off to here uh, over the last uh, couple of days. Of course, uh, Dontavious Nash saying that the team was going to go back to back on Twitter. That was what uh, he was quoted as saying on Thursday on Twitter. So uh, we're keeping an eye out. We're still on commitment watch here uh, as of Monday night when we are recording this. And of course, we'll keep you updated on all of that on the website, HeelToughBlog.com. But we want to talk about Travion Stevenson, who the Tar Heels just added to this class. And in case you missed it, shortly after 10 a.m., the other Uh, afternoon on Saturday morning. Uh, The three-star outside linebacker committed to Carolina after decommitting from Pittsburgh on Thursday afternoon. This was one where uh, the feeling is that Carolina worked pretty quick on this. Uh, Dre Bly is believed to be the guy that had the uh, most to do with this flip. Uh, Another guy, uh, Travion Stevenson, uh, that is from the uh, Virginia area, from that 757 area Phoebus High School in Hampton, Virginia. And you look, I mean, you, you look at the overall star rating, might not jump off the page to you. He is a three star. He's a guy that's listed as the number 84 weak side defensive end, according to the 24 7 Sports composite rankings. 24 7 Sports, uh, their website actually has him ranked as a two star, so they see him a little bit lower. But I feel like when you look at the star rating, you know, people read a little bit too much into that because if you throw on the film of Travion Stevenson, it's a lot better than I think a lot of people would expect. He's got the length on him. Uh, that's the most attractive thing about him. That's something that I think Carolina was looking for to fit that rush end type position uh, that he's going to more than likely end up playing. Um, he does a great job using those long arms, using that long frame to keep offensive tackles from getting their hands inside on him, which is something that is very key. That's That's one of the ways that offensive tackles are able to have control on defensive players whenever they're rushing the passer. He does a good job of extending those long arms and giving himself a little bit of room to be able to navigate past the offensive tackle. He does it quite a few times on film. Um, And again, you know, if you watch it, 
At 217, or at 6'3", 217, he's small, but he's definitely a guy that I think is more powerful than you would maybe expect. Um, so I think that there's a lot of upside with him. The biggest thing to know about Travion Stevenson is this is going to be a guy that is going to take time to become a, a potential impact player. This is likely a guy that was picked up in this class uh, as a depth guy, a depth piece early on in his career, uh, a guy that can come in, sort of learn the system, work through it, put on some weight in the weight room, and sort of fine-tune his skills to become a better player. But I think the big thing to know about Travion Stevenson when you look at him is that Again, you know, star rating is what everybody looks at, but look at the offers that this young man had. Just picked up a recent offer from Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech on there as well, Iowa State, Louisville, Missouri, Nebraska, Syracuse, Tennessee, Texas. There are a lot of big-time schools that are on here. Florida State was another team who was on there. Pittsburgh, of course, who he was once committed to. So, I mean, look, you know, Carolina ends up picking up a guy that I think helps them a lot with what they need in this 2021 class. I think weak side defensive end was one of their biggest needs, uh, especially after they missed on George Wilson, a guy that they thought they had in the bag for so long. But you got to be really impressed with how quickly the staff was able to rebound from that just a week later, and they already had their replacement for him. So this is a great job by the staff. Now, I think the other question that a lot of people are asking, and they were thinking that potentially this could be one of the other guys that they were talking about, that the current recruits were talking about. Maybe Zaire Patterson could potentially flip from Clemson. Very talented four-star weak side defensive end. Fits that rush end type position uh, very well. As of right now, it doesn't look like he's going to be one of those guys that's going to flip. It looks like he's still pretty solidly committed to Clemson. But in my mind, I think with him as well as George Wilson, who, you know, just from some of the quotes that we saw after he committed to South Carolina, still seems like there is a chance that if he was to be able to get visits at some point later on this year, he might end up taking them. Carolina could be one of the spots that he could go ahead and visit. I think Carolina is going to stay in contact with those guys. I don't know if it means if they bring in one of those guys, Travion Stevenson ends up decommitting or potentially losing this spot. But I think, you know, Carolina is always going to be the, on the lookout for good talent, especially at that position where they just don't have a ton of depth. They're going to lose guys like Timon Fox, like Tyrone Hopper later on this year to where there won't be uh, really any proven depth there going into next year potentially. It really just depends on how much guys like Chris Collins, guys like true freshman Des Evans, who we really like, love the upside, but have to be able to see on the field. Will those guys be able to get reps this season? Or really, even will they be able to get reps in practice, even if they're not out on the field on Saturdays playing big reps for the Tar Heels? Even those practice reps can really, really help. But as of right now, with everything going on with the COVID-19 situation, you just never really know. So Carolina wants to load up at that position, get a, a, you know, a group of different options in there. And Travion Stevenson is now a guy that is committed to the class. With his commitment, Carolina now has uh, 17 commitments in the, or excuse me, 18 commitments in the class of 2021. Although it will basically become 17 because that is still counting um, Tony Grimes as a commitment in the class. Tony, of course, is going to move into the 2020 class. They'll make that official in August whenever he does officially re-enroll and reclassify. But Carolina is still looking at probably three or four spots open. It really just depends, I think. It also depends on the uh, the overall talent of certain guys as to whether or not they would take them and try to find room for them. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at who potentially fits that mold, you know, there are a couple of guys that could end up being this next person that is going to commit to this class that a lot of the recruits were hinting at. I think, you know, some of the big names that were thrown out there that I can pretty much confirm to you, one, one that I can confirm to you, Will Shipley will not flip. That is not going to happen. Evan Pryor is 
he's the same way. It's not going to be him. Um, Zaire Patterson seems almost certain as well. Uh, also, Peyton Page will not be a guy that's going to be coming on. It's pretty much down to Clemson and Tennessee. Carolina might have a hat on the table uh, with his commitment here um, sometime uh, next week, July 26th. Um, but Carolina will not be the selection there, boring something uh, drastic changing over these next few days. Um, so, look, Carolina's got some guys that really make some sense here. I think, you know, a lot of people want to believe that it's Tyrion Ingram Dawkins, the four star defensive tackle from Gaffney High School in Gaffney, South Carolina. I just don't think that that is going to happen right now. I think eventually down the line, Carolina might have a chance. As we know, Tyrion Ingram Dawkins, his recruitment's kind of been all over the place. It's been a lot of up and downs. Carolina's had some momentum. South Carolina's had some momentum at times. Um, you know, e- there was even a little push from Florida State, Tennessee. Georgia has always kind of been the, the, the slight favorite with South Carolina right behind, and then the Tar Heels right behind them. But... It, it, it still feels like he's going to probably put out a top schools list before he ends up actually committing. So while there is a chance that he could just go ahead and commit to Carolina, I, I think you know with him you can never just get a quite a read on where you know what school he's feeling, how much he's feeling that school. Um, I don't think that it's going to end up being him. It really comes down to two guys for me, and you can go and read an article that we got on the website heeltoughblog.com. Just put it up the other day. Um, you know who the title of the article is: Who commits next? Um, I think. You know, it's between two guys for me. It looks like four-star tight end Bryson Nesbitt might be a little bit closer than we originally thought when he released his top uh, 13 school list um, back a couple of months ago. Uh, It seems like, you know, just from the surface, Carolina and South Carolina seem to be the two schools that are right in the race for it. It seems like they're neck and neck. I'd be very shocked if he goes anywhere else besides those two schools. And the other thing that's interesting to note about Nesbitt is he has been around a lot of Tar Heel commits as of late. He was, of course, participating in the Blazing 7-on-7, where we saw guys like J.J. Jones. We saw guys like Drake May who were out there. Um, So he's been around those guys. Then, uh, I think it was last Sunday. Yes, last Sunday, um, he was out at the VTO camp, which was here uh, in Matthews, uh, right down the the block from my house, actually. Um, He was actually out there participating. Guys like Ra Ra Dilworth were out there, um, as well as a couple other guys guys that are big time Tar Heel uh, targets. So there, you know, there's a lot of momentum from, you know, Tar Heel commits that are out there. Potentially that's played a role in, you know, what his thinking. Maybe he's that next guy that's saying, hey, I could be close to committing, but we're just not sure about that. I think there's a, a decent chance, but I'm not sure if that's who it is. I think the better chance of the group is probably the three-star kicker. Now, when we say three-star kicker, I want people to realize that, again, those star ratings, especially for kickers, are something that you really, really need to look at in a different light. A three-star kicker is a very, very talented kicker. Most kickers are not rated by 24-7 sports. Most of them, uh, if they are rated, usually are two stars. For him to be a three-star kicker, this guy's number two in the entire country among current kickers. Some sites have him as the number one kicker in the country. He is an extremely talented player. That's Andres Baragales, uh, who comes from uh, Champaign Madonna High School down there in, uh, in Hollywood, Florida. Fantastic player, a guy that's been committed to Miami for a little while now. His family is big Miami fans. His brother currently is a player at Miami after transferring from Florida International. So there were a lot of reasons why he could stay at Miami, but it seems like he's really developed a good relationship, not only with the staff, 
But with a lot of the guys currently committed in this class, even though it's been through text messaging and stuff like that, it feels like, you know, just from what he's been saying, he is going to take a visit to Carolina. It's going to be a virtual visit. It'll be online. That was supposed to be sometime today, according to one rumor that I heard. I'm not 100% sure how concrete that actually is because I haven't talked to Andres himself to ask him exactly when that uh, virtual visit is going to be. But uh, the belief is that he is going to end up visiting at some point or has already taken that visit. And then from there, it will be interesting to monitor if he's going to flip or not. He really has uh, you know, been talking about Carolina for a while, even before he got the offer last week. That came on Thursday. That really seemed to sort of spark some things. And that's really where everything started to begin. Once Travion Stevenson decommitted and you saw that offer for Andres Baragalis, that's when everything sort of picked up on the social media front for the current commits. And we saw guys like Keyshawn Silver on there. We saw guys like Eli Sutton um, that, that was saying big things were on the horizon. And then, of course, the tweet that we've been talking about for most of this episode that led to us being able to discuss who could possibly be that second guy, Dontavious Nash saying they were going to go back-to-back. So that's something to monitor over the next couple of days. Make sure you guys keep an eye on that and we'll of course have you covered on the Heel Tough blog website. Now before we get out of here, um, again we don't have any updated information uh, on COVID-19 Unfortunately, the ACC has kind of dragged their feet after uh, they were rumored to be in the same mindset as some of the other conferences if they were going to play football in the fall. We've already seen um, the Big Ten has said that they will go uh, all conference games. The Pac-12 followed that uh, a few days later. But since then, everything's kind of cooled off. We haven't heard anything from the SEC or the Big 12. The ACC, we heard rumors that they were thinking about going in that direction as well, but we haven't heard anything since then. Again, I think ultimately it makes the most sense for a lot of these conferences to just go conference play only. I know a lot of people will say, well, some of these teams that are going to have to travel, let's say Miami having to travel to Syracuse. Again, I don't know if they play, but there are some other instances where, uh, you know, for example, um, you know, Florida State having to travel to Boston College or vice versa, however that's going to work this year. You know, I, I think that it, it it does make a little bit of sense, but I feel like if they go with all conference play, they can at least contain it to a, a coast, a side of the country, something like that. Um, ultimately, you know, I think it's just going to come down to how comfortable are the athletes, uh, is the NCAA uh, finding a way that they can be able to protect these guys uh, going forward, um, you know, after uh, this season, not only in terms of you know potential fallout from COVID-19 if a guy comes down with it, but also potential injuries that could happen this season or next season, depending on how they would adjust the schedule. Those are the big things that everybody's going to be talking about for a while. So, of course, we'll keep you updated on the Heel Tough Blog website, heeltoughblog.com. That's where you can go and check out all the articles. Uh, make sure you go out on there. Check out uh, Travion Stevenson's commitment article who we just talked about, the article about who could be the next to commit. Make sure you guys go and read that as well. We've got some other great stuff that's going to be coming out and as of right now with the ACC not saying anything just yet we're going to wait till the end of next week but if by next Friday they do not release a plan on what they are supposed to do for this upcoming season we are going to be right on the fringe of August so we're going to go ahead and start pushing out our position previews. That's right in-depth position previews a look at each position in depth and it also means that that's right you get a look at every single guy that is going to be on the roster we'll talk about every guy that could potentially have an impact we even mentioned the walk on some of them that could potentially have an impact We'll have all of that. It's one of the best things you can read before the season to make sure that you're ready because we cover it as in-depth as just about anybody out there. So keep an eye on the website for that. Other way you can do it is by subscribing to the website because if you put your email in at the bottom uh, of the screen, you scroll all the way down to the bottom when you log, when you go on to the website, you can put in your email address and we can send each article right to your inbox. Uh, so make sure you guys check out that feature. That's a really 
cool thing that we do as well. Um, and of course, we also encourage you to go uh, wherever you listen to this podcast, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. The rating and reviewing, as we've been telling you, that kind of helps us move up some of those rankings on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, some of these other websites, because the more exposure that we get, the better chance that people who haven't found the podcast just yet, that are Tar Heel fans, can find the podcast, listen to all these great episodes. Of course, you guys can go back, check out some of the off-season episodes that we've done. Um, we've got some other stuff if you're wanting to catch up on uh, some of the recruiting that's been happening during the off-season. You can go back, check that out. Me and Zach have been handling that. There's a couple of interesting um, additions of the podcast with me and Josh here in the off-season. And then, of course, all the great interviews that we did this off-season with guys spanning all all the way back to the 1970s. Uh, James Betterson, that's uh, the last one that's going to be coming out, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming out uh, sometime later this week. That's an exciting addition. That'll wrap it up uh, for the off-season uh, interview series, the quarantine interview series, as we were calling it. Um, and, of course, there's all sorts of other great episodes that you guys can go check out from that series uh, with guys as current as... Um, you know, a guy that just graduated this past year um, and moved on uh, to the NFL uh, in uh, in Antonio Williams, who is uh, actually just moved up to Buffalo. He just posted that uh, yesterday, actually. So you can go back, check that out. And uh, as we mentioned, it goes all the way back. Scott Stankavich, the former quarterback we had on. Chris Kildorf was on with us. There's so many great guys that you can go back and listen to uh, on the uh, feed. Make sure you subscribe subscribe to it so you don't miss that James Betterson edition of the podcast or some of the upcoming editions of the podcast where we'll start to potentially get into preseason mode. Again, we're not certain what the ACC is going to do, so we're preparing like it's a regular season. So, want to thank you guys for listening to this edition of the podcast. Make sure you keep an eye out for that edition coming up with James Betterson. And then this weekend's edition with Zach Hubbard on Travion Stevenson and everything else going on on the recruiting trail. And as always, go Tar Heels! Go Tar Heels!